After examining root directory entries for particular files and the corresponding inodes, it is a good time to examine the inode structure itself. There are a couple of ways to jump to the inode in WinHex. Well, first, uh, since we already know the number, for instance, if we take file 2, it has inode 13. Um, it's possible to um, navigate to position and select go to inode. So here, enter the required index in this box. Or, if uh, we find the file in the directory browser, like this file 2, we can right-click its name and choose position, go to inode. This takes us instantly to the right place. And I want to clarify that what we are looking at here is not the content of the file. This is a place in the inode table area. where all inode data structures reside. And this uh, table has every node uh, with specific index, like our file, file number 2, has index 13. So this is the data structure, like this. And the size of inode, of course, is 128 bytes. All right, so what do we expect to find here inside the inode structure? So it's pretty much everything except the actual file name and file path information. So in WinHex, uh, you can go to View, Template Manager, and select uh, ext2, ext3, inode template, or there is a shortcut right here that takes you to the same template. So here's the file type. So in our case, it's values 8, which means regular file. For a directory, this would be a value of 4. Locations of data blocks on disk. So this is this section right here corresponds to possible pointers to data blocks on the file system. So this is this area. We have the file size, which is specified in bytes. And this is the logical file size. Basically, that's the file size visible to the user. So then standard Unix ownership user group permissions right here. And this arrow actually should go here to the permissions, right? So th those are permissions. Uh, but then the user and group are specified by the respectful ID. So this is owner ID. And uh, we also have the group ID right here. Of course, uh, access modified timestamps area. And inode also has a timestamp which records when the actual inode record was updated. So this uh, last modification is right here. So this is also a pretty important field to be aware of. And uh, just a reminder that the term inode stands for index node, and it plays a role not only in the file system organization, but also in a multi-user, multitasking environment, uh, which must rely on file locking mechanism to provide safe and reliable access to the file shared by multiple users. So, for example, this file tool that we have on our file system could be accessed by one user who wants to read the file, right? So one user wants to read the file. Another user wants to write into this file. And the third user may want to delete the file. So these are all different operations. And they may all start happening at the same time in the concurrent environment. Perhaps in this example, example, the first user who wants to open uh, the file for reading does not expect the file to be deleted while its data is being read from disk. So therefore, the program uh, which attempts to delete the file must wait uh, until the reading by the first program is complete. The operating system has to rely on locking mechanism to allow all of this to happen in the right order. 
and this is where the inode comes into place because it can be locked in support of exclusive right of a process to access a file. So inode has a status indicating that pending modifications in memory require physical data uh, save on disk and all other operations uh, are capable of intercooperating in this manner to guarantee data safety and integrity. So inode contains a list of data block numbers allocated on disk as visible here in our inode example. We have these blocks which provide information about allocation. And data block is similar to disk cluster on Windows and file data blocks can be fragmented on disk. inode structure itself is only 128 bytes, but it's interesting to know that the maximum file size on ext3 is actually 2 terabytes. So that's pretty impressive how this little structure could expand into 2 terabytes. And this is possible because the actual inode data blocks, also known as a table of contents, reserve only 13 pointers to the disk blocks. Right, so right here we have these uh, 13 pointers, but they are hierarchical in nature. So the first uh, 12 uh, data block entries in the table of contents are called direct blocks. So basically specifying that uh, this uh, file here is occupying uh, block 1209 and 1212. So basically two blocks belong to this file and these are direct blocks. But if the file outgrows the size of 12 blocks, then we step into the territory of indirect blocks, where basically if we had an indirect block uh, specified here, that block right here, its block number would be pointing to this indirect block, which basically is not the content of the file, but the table of entries of disk blocks, another table of contents which extends into the uh, separate data block, which just lists the entries for the sequence of indirect blocks. And so these blocks will be entered here in a separate place on disk uh, where additional blocks can be listed. And so, of course, when the program loads the file, they all will be processed sequentially. First, we're going to be loading the direct blocks. Then, if we still have indirect blocks to process, then we'd be loading these. And then, if the file is even larger than this structure can permit, then what we call is double indirect block allows an additional structure, which is also hierarchical, which in itself points to the set of indirect blocks, which in itself allows to have those double indirect blocks. So these all can permit additional, additional, this time we call them double indirect blocks. And uh, so then in its own turn, so all these double indirect blocks will be processed next. If we run out of space in this huge, enormously huge uh, data structure, then there is even a more possibility what is called triple indirect block. So this triple indirect block here would be that um, expanding into something that instead of using these double indirect blocks as data blocks, instead they themselves will become index blocks, which will expand into even larger tree of blocks linked into the file. So that would be in case if we have this triple indirect block entry. And so this uh, whole idea expands to this uh, hierarchical organization of data blocks permits two terabyte size on disk.